I, I thought the, the thing that would make this show work is, first of all, there's not a huge budget. And the idea is that uh, I can write the show, I can produce the show, I can do most of the voices, hopefully, and um, oversee production. But uh, I can maintain music and do it myself in my own home studio. And this studio that I have back here is much more elaborate than what I started out with, which was a G4 and a Line 6 pot, and that's how I started the first season, you know. And the idea is that I think if you're doing a project that it's your own project, I think you want to be able to not have to travel to do it. I think you want to be able to keep it confined in, in, in a small area. And the only reason I went to a studio was to hopefully learn a couple of tricks, A, B, work with a, you know, a great team and see use real drums because I can't do that I don't have the time I don't I don't and I'm not prepared enough to even tell a drummer do this or do that or the other thing because I have to again sketch it out and the sketch ends up being the final product a lot of the times because I don't have time and the drums people are still to this day they don't know that I'm not using a real drummer People come up like musicians and go oh I thought that was you recorded that and I say no that that was the easy drummer stuff. Like the drum kit from hell. It was just the thing I go to all the time and I'll do a couple of things, I'll bust out a couple of things every time, but it's pretty much that. And then as the show went on, working with Gene Hoagland, his style started influencing the show. And then I would program stuff that I wanted him to play and easy drummer patterns started influencing his stuff because I had a, a song called The Gears that was, a lot of it was, really fast blast beats and stuff and I, I took a lot of just pre because I'm always running out of time pre patterned fills and stuff and I'd throw that in there and he started learning that stuff and he put that on the record and now he does that stuff live which is really funny how it all kind of goes full circle but the whole thing is you know I'm always running out of time and I have to commit to something very quickly and that's what makes using the drum kit um, here's how I would uh, describe the death clock sound. When I was trying to come up with it, I wanted to have something that was, uh, because in metal there's not really, um, there's no melody in the vocal. So I wanted to make something that had lots of double kicks and lots of detuned guitars down to C standard tuning. And then hopefully with enough chord changes and guitar harmonies on top of it to make it, uh, to have hooks and to hopefully be listenable at the same time. Um, the whole idea is to, uh, is to kind of have like something that's very heavy meets Queen in some way. And so I thought Metallica meets Queen, but heavier, more kicks, a little bit more uh, uh, kind of take, take stuff from the from modern death metal like Cannibal Corpse, like kind of scarier, lower chromatic E riffs, and, um, and uh, the kind of tremolo picking style of the uh, Norwegian black metal kind of stuff and uh, fuse that together and keep on throwing those kind of modern mental isms into one thing and, and that's and again have enough guitar harmonies or enough chord changes to to have your ear interested to, to see what the next part of the song is I wanted to make sure that uh, the guitarists sounded different enough when when they were put on the spot and I thought that'd be interesting because I remember listening to old King Diamond records and stuff and you wanted to hear who was playing what solo and they would have it transcribed but you could also hear the playing style differences. So I wanted to make sure one guy was coming from more of a diatonic, scalar or modal place and that was Squisgar who probably read a few more books and paid attention a little bit more in music school. And then Toki was a little bit more of a pentatonic box guy and he was uh, coming from like maybe the older school, kind of the Iron Maiden kind of a place. And, uh, and uh, Squisgar was more of a, again, traditional harmony, Yngwie Malmsteen style, you know, listen to a lot of Bach and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 